Welcome to the Retirement Made Easy podcast, a show created to be your go-to source for straightforward retirement advice. Best of all, it is presented in a language that you can understand. Are you ready for some straight talk on retirement planning without all the fluff? Well, you found the right podcast. Here's your host, Certified Financial Planner, Greg Gonzalez. Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast. This is episode number 121. On this week's episode, we will be discussing the big changes to Social Security that were announced here in October. And a week or so prior to that change, there was a small change that was announced to Medicare. Medicare Part B uh, premiums went down a little bit. We'll talk about that. And then... What is forcing so many people to retire in 2022? It's not what we were talking about at the beginning of the year, but it is fascinating nonetheless. What's happening to corporate pensions and why so many people are headed for retirement before the end of the year? That's what we'll talk about on today's episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast. Before we get into that, I want to thank all listeners that have booked a 30-minute retirement coaching session with me. I have really, really enjoyed the conversations. So if you haven't already and that's something you're interested in, check out my website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. You can sign up for that retirement coaching session. And please check out my retirement resources that are all free and downloadable right there on the website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. All right, let's get into today's episode, the big changes to Social Security, small change to Medicare, and the big changes that are happening to corporate pensions across the country. So first off, with Social Security, every year in October, the Social Security Administration announces what the cost of living will be to Social Security recipients. Last year in 2021, it was announced it was 5.9%. Because inflation in 2021 was 5.9% given the index that they use. So on October 13th of this year, 2022, the Social Security Administration announced the cost of living adjustment, which would goes into effect the following January. So in this case, it's going to go into effect January 2023. It will be 8.7%. Let me say that again. And that is based on, again, Social Security Administration uses an inflation index. And for all the people out there that say, oh, there's there's no inflation. Well, you've got to be kidding me. Inflation, we haven't seen this inflation like this in 40 years. In fact, it was 1982 when we saw inflation higher than an 8.7% raise with Social Security. That's the last time we've seen 8.7% or higher. And in fact, in 1982, inflation was so high that the Social Security Administration raised the cost of living 11.2% in 1982. In 1981, it went up 14.3%. Social Security recipients got a 14.3% raise And then in 1980, the cost of living adjustment was 9.9%. So 40 years since we've had cost of living adjustments this high, this is almost historic, really. And you look at where interest rates are for the people out there that are looking at mortgages, for example. Mortgages, like a 30-year mortgage right now, is over 7% as I'm recording this podcast. And there's a lot of evidence out there that, that shows us that higher interest rates slow down an economy. Higher interest rates are bad for an economy. And that's why everybody's concerned we're going to be pushed further and further into a recession with these increasingly higher interest rates to help combat inflation. But just think about, you know, for a minute, okay, what do higher interest rates mean for people borrowing money? So, okay, if I got a 30 year mortgage in 2021 and the interest rate was two and a half percent, and I did a little math here. Let's say you bought a $500,000 home. Your payment would be right under $2,000 a month versus now in 2022, let's say that same 30-year mortgage is at 7%. 
your monthly payment is 3,300 bucks. So it went up $1,300 per month just because interest rates on a 30 year mortgage went from two and a half to seven. So for people borrowing money, for businesses borrowing money, if interest rates are higher, it's more expensive to borrow. So they're going to borrow less and that slows down the economy. That's just one example. For Social Security recipients, getting back to them, yeah, come January, their Social Security checks are going to be 8.5% higher due to this cost of living adjustment, but actually they'll be a little bit more, they'll be $5 on top of that, uh, depending on your income. So if you're on Medicare and you're paying Medicare Part B premiums and you're in the lowest income band, so to speak, uh, you're paying $170 a month in 2022. And that's actually going down, actually going down to $165 a month come 2023. And they found out that they actually raised the Part B premiums too much back in 2021. They actually raised those 14.5%, and it ended up being too much. So again, if you're on Medicare, paying for Medicare Part B, which is right now $170 a month, and again, that's dependent on your income. That'll go down to 165 come January 2023. So that's good news. There's an extra $5. President Biden, they were interviewing him in a press conference, and he was acting like this was going to be this monumental thing and really help out people and put more money in retirees' pockets. It's five bucks a month. How far is that going to go when inflation's 8.7%? But, but what can you say? So I digress. And the good news, again, Social Security recipients are going to see that raise come January 8.7%. Don't expect to see that for another 40 years. But then again, again, as I talked about, there was high inflation in the 80s, 80, 81, 82. We saw record inflation and Social Security increased the cost of living those three years consecutively, 9.9%, 14.3%. And then 11.2% in 1982. So what is the cost of living? What is inflation going to be in 2023? Who knows? But if it's anything like the 80s, the early 80s, you had three consecutive years of very, very high inflation. Now let's kind of change gears here and let's talk about pensions. Now, in a year like this, obviously, when your costs go up 8.7%, Right. Let's just assume Social Security's measure of inflation is true to the goods and services that you buy in a calendar year. Let's say it is 8.7%. And you're living on a fixed income, meaning your pension does not have a cost of living adjustment associated with it. So it is a fixed amount for the rest of your life. You get a, let's assume it's, let's say it's $2,000 a month that you get as a pension check for the rest of your life. So when the cost of living goes up 8.7%, your pension check is still only $2,000 a month. You don't get that raise like Social Security recipients do. So that's a big, big danger. And those people that are on a fixed income from a fixed lifetime pension are really, really getting squeezed. And a lot of people identify that. And if they have the ability, they try to take a lump sum pension option. So let's assume that you worked 30 years for Ford, Ford Motor Company, and you're entitled to the pension, right? So they offer you your pension, which is either $55,000 a year for the rest of your life. And if you want to add your spouse on there, then it's going to be less than $55,000 a year. And this is hypothetical, by the way. This is not actual figures from Ford, but it's, it's going to be fairly close. You'll, you'll get the idea behind it. Or they might offer you a lump sum check option. And what this allows you to do, let's say instead of the $55,000 a year fixed pension, they allow you to get a lump sum buyout in the form of a million dollar check, which you don't have to pay the taxes on the full million dollars. You can roll that into your 401k or your IRA where you can control how the money is invested and you can take withdrawals how you see fit. So what is this, this pension, this, this lump sum pension option, what does it have to do with interest rates? Why am I even talking about this? Well, there's a fantastic article that I read this past week, and I believe it was in the Wall Street Journal online, but the title was 
senior KFC executives opt for retirement as interest rates hit pension payouts. I'll try to put a link to the article in the show notes so you can read along. But the article went on to say that due to higher interest rates, higher interest rates cause these lump sums that they offer you on your pension plan to be lower. And there are actually three senior executives with KFC, which is the the fried chicken right uh, restaurants across the country. And that's actually Yum Brands is the, the Fortune 500 company publicly traded that's behind KFC. So it was the Yum Brands corporate pension. And with higher interest rates, the higher interest rates go, the lower they offer as far as a lump sum payment. And so all of these senior executives that work for KFC, they're retiring early before these higher interest rates go into effect in December. And therefore, their pension lump sums, checks that they would receive would be a lot lower. So they're better off retiring now where they can get a lot higher lump sum pension buyout check versus if they keep working into 2023, rates are then higher, they're going to get a lower, substantially lower lump sum pension buyout check. It also, the article went on to um, give an example of a woman that was 60 years old and had worked for a long time for Ford Motor Company. And she had until the end of November to retire and get a million dollar pension lump sum buyout. But if she waited past that, if she worked one more year, that pension lump sum buyout would go down to $700,000. So it would cost her the difference of a million and 700,000 is a $300,000 less pension buyout, again, because interest rates went up. And so the article mentioned this wealth advisor, which is a fancy word for financial planner, That was based in Michigan, was working with a lot of Ford employees, trying to help understand what the difference would be in their pension lump sum buyout option if they retired before December 1st, or if they waited and kept working, how much would that pension lump sum buyout go down? And in this example, it went down 30% from a million to $700,000. Because that's a huge difference. And and if I'm that woman that was mentioned in the article and had a chance to retire now and get a million dollar pension lump sum buyout or keep working and retire next year and they give me 700 grand, I am definitely retiring before December 1st of this year and taking my million dollar lump sum pension buyout and being very, very happy that I had the opportunity that they gave her the heads up that, hey, rates went up and these are going to be adjusted. These pension lump sum buyouts are going to be adjusted downwards. So across the country, you are seeing these corporate pensions. If they do offer a pension lump sum buyout, virtually all of them are based on interest rates. And with higher interest rates, that means they're going to pay you a lower lump sum pension buyout. Here in St. Louis, for example, a lot of people, a lot of our clients, they work for the company Boeing, Fortune 500 company. It's the same with their pension system. Higher interest rates mean lower pension buyout if they don't retire before December 1st of this year. So if you're a listener of this podcast and you have access to a pension lump sum buyout, I would definitely check it out and see if you can run an estimate. How much would it be if I'm planning on taking that pension lump sum buyout whenever you retire? Check it out now because you might be leaving a lot of money on the table by waiting an extra year or two to retire. And I know it's hard as far as timing your retirement, timing your exit, and, and moving on to the, the golden years, the good years of retirement. And so many people that retire tell me it can be a tough transition. It can be a really, really tough transition when you're going a mile a minute, you're working. Some people are even working overtime and then you retire and it, it goes down to nothing. It can be a huge, huge, almost depressing transition for some people. And when you don't have the time to plan ahead for this transition, something like this, that, hey, I've got to retire before December 1st, or I lose out on 300 grand, that can be a very, very tough decision to make in a short amount of time, and it almost doesn't prepare you for retirement. So what many people are doing 
is they're kind of going into what we call semi-retirement. And they're continuing to work on a consulting basis or part-time or finding some kind of work or volunteering that they really, really enjoy. And a lot of times, of course, it's not going to be the same amount of pay. So your earned income, your take-home pay is going to go down. But in most instances, your stress level will also go down. There's a fantastic book out there for those of you that, that are interested. It's called The New Retirementality. It was written by uh, Mitch Anthony. It was published actually in 2008, so it's a little dated, but it is a fantastic book that has really helped a lot of our clients as they plan for that transition phase into a meaningful retirement. It may involve working in, in whatever capacity that suits them. One last thing I wanted to mention on today's episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast is what I've been hearing from a lot of folks that I'm talking to that are in that retirement planning phase. Maybe it's on the horizon. A lot of them, of, of course, are disappointed that the market is down so much here in 2022, and they have kind of pushed off their retirement dreams. So if they thought they wanted to retire at 62, they're saying, okay, how long is it going to take before the market recovers? Maybe their dream is now 65. This really hurts me hearing this, to be honest, because I don't want to hear people push off their dreams. And I say this all the time, your time is your wealth. You know how fast the days and years go. Your time is your wealth. You got to get it right. So first off, again, write down, figure out what your goal is. If your goal is to retire at the end of 2023, then hey, okay, we're, we got a target here that we're shooting for. How can we build a retirement action plan to make sure that happens? We don't know if the market's gonna recover next year, but let's not worry about that. Let's not assume the market is gonna recover next year. Let's say, what if it doesn't? I still have my goal of wanting to retire at the end of 2023, and I wanna make sure that happens no matter what happens to the market. That's a bulletproof retirement plan. That's what I'm talking about. And that's what I want to hear people say that, hey, no matter what happens, I've got this. I've got a plan and I've got it covered. So if you're working with a retirement planner and you've got a goal of retiring in the next year or two years, I think this is a fantastic time to update your retirement action plan. Go to work, see where it stands, and put a plan in place to make sure you can retire when you want to, and how you want to. I hope this episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast has been helpful. I'll see you next week. And remember, always dream big. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, please consult your attorney, tax advisor, or financial advisor prior to investing. This is a hypothetical example and is not representative of any specific investment. Your results may vary. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices mentioned are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. The Smart Vester program is a directory of investment professionals. Neither Dave Ramsey nor Smart Vester are affiliates of St. Louis Retirement Advisors or LPL Financial. There is no guarantee that a diversified portfolio will enhance overall returns or outperform a non-diversified portfolio. Diversification does not protect against market risk. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member of FINRA, SIPC. Thank you for listening to the show today. Check us out at our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. And if you want some help from Greg, submit your questions at the bottom of the page or sign up for a 30-minute retirement coaching session with Greg. We'll see you next week.